Welcome to another installment of Talking About. I'm Christopher Del Gaudio, and this is my co-host, Bob Laria. Hi, Chris. Good to be working with you again. Good to be working with you. And we're here to talk to you this evening about homosexuality in the workplace. Homosexuals have been a part of the workplace since time began. And as history has evolved, they've become somewhat more present and more visible. With us this evening is a guest who can tell you a great deal more about that. He's no stranger to the media. Uh, he was the first openly gay New York City police officer to have received the Medal of Valor in 1997. His name is Tony Crespo, <clears throat> and we, we'd like to welcome you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome to Talking welcome, About. Thank you, um, You were a former vice president uh, uh, of the GOAL Association. The GOAL is an ac acronym that stands for what exactly? Actually, um, I was just a board member. You were a board member? Yeah, I was a board member okay. uh, uh, for a couple of years. Um, and basically, the organization is it's the Gay Officers Action League. And what it is, it's a... Um, an organization for everyone who's involved in the criminal justice system, uh, whether they're law enforcement or they're civilians working within the criminal justice system. Um, and it's open to basically everyone, but uh, the majority happen to, uh, majority of the members are part of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. Um, and what, we do, what the organization does is they're pretty much a, a support group and they also um, advocate um, for any type of political uh, issues that come about. I think right now one of the issues that they're working on is the issue of the Boy Scouts, um, the Boy Scouts' involvement with the police department. Okay. In, in what capacity, actually? Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not too familiar with the whole case itself, but I know that the police department has a uh, program called the Explorers Program, which is involved with the Boy Scouts. And as we know, we've read in the newspapers, the Boy Scouts is, are, is an organization that's discriminating against the gay and lesbian community. So the organization, Tony, goal then basically is nationwide. It's nationwide chapters. Yes, correct? yes it is. I see, because you mentioned earlier anyone in, in, uh, in law enforcement. Right. Gets is it in <clears throat> currently every state in the United States? Um, I think they, they, they have been slowly trying to work their way in mm -hmm. different states. Um, uh, right now, they just recently, they just restarted a, uh, a group out in Long Island. Um, not too long ago, they, they started another group down in Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, so they slowly are building their way throughout the states. Now, in receiving the, uh, <clears throat> the Medal of Valor, um, first of all, if you could define exactly what the Medal of Valor is for the, the audience members who may not know, and what were the events that led up to your receiving that? Um, basically, the, the Medal of Valor is like the third highest uh, medal that the department gives out. And they give it out to someone who pretty much puts their life on the line um, while performing their duties in a, uh, in a correct way. Um, and what happened... According to the police department. Right, according yeah, regulations, to the right, police department yeah. regulations. <laughs> Basically, what happened to me was I was working, and this happened in 1995, I was working inside the precinct, uh, inside the complaint room, and a ma male walked into the precinct with a knife and tried to stab this female cop who was sitting next to me. So I tried to stop him, and he stabbed me in the chest. Um, oh. I fired my weapon. Another officer came running into the room. He fired his weapon, and the, the bullet that, that hit the, the male went through him, and then it hit me in the knee. So I pretty much got stabbed, uh, stabbed shot. shot in one day, exactly. uh, which is probably that's something that no one would probably go through in their whole 20 year you know, uh, career. That's uh, certainly putting your life on the line <laughs> there, absolutely. Uh, how, how badly were you hurt as a result of that? Um, I sustained uh, the knife wound to the chest, the, 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 sh the gunshot wound in the knee, and my left lung had collapsed. Wow. Um, but after being hospitalized, it came back to its normal state. Obviously, everything is fine now, yes. Tony. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it was Mayor Giuliani who had presented you with the uh, the Medal of Valor. Yes, it was. At it was uh, Giuliani and Commissioner Safer at the time. At the time, right? right. That's right. Okay, great. Um, at the time when you were getting a lot of this publicity as a result of receiving the Medal of Valor, now this was the first time when attention was being drawn to your sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. 
um, or had you come out prior to that? Um, when I was in the academy, I didn't bother to say anything to anyone because I knew it was just a short time that I would be there and interact with the other officers. But when I got to my uh, precinct that I was assigned to right after the academy, um, I, I only spoke to a couple of the officers that were in that precinct. So a couple of the officers knew. Uh, I didn't feel I had to hide it because, you know, I've, you know, I I, I'm independent. So why would I? Why should I hide it? You know, I, was it I, frightening you know. to you? Ed, uh, was there anything that was uh, um, intimidating about it, or? Uh well, one of the things that I, that made me feel secure was the organization, the Gay Officers Action. I was just going to ask you, okay. yeah, Chris, because I got did involved. The organization exists right previously, right? right. Okay. I got involved with them from the beginning. From the beginning, okay, okay. Um, right. So I sort of felt secured about coming out and telling people about myself. So upon completing your training, then in the academy, that's when you had joined Goal and had become associated with them, right? And then right. felt more comfortable about um, uh, you know, voicing your sexual orientation. But when the Medal of Valor uh, incident occurred and you began to get a lot of publicity, you had found, I understand, that the media had ignored the fact that you had mm -hmm. mentioned your lover at the time, your, uh, your companion. Was that something that was very irritating to you? Or? Yeah, I was a little upset. Um, actually, the media, the media didn't acknowledge me at the time of the actual incident. Okay. Um, <laughs> they finally acknowledged... Uh, my my sexual orientation when I got the Medal of Valor because it was the first time that anybody who was openly gay ever got such a medal. Okay, right. Um, I don't know what happened, but some somewhere along the line, when it was, I believe it was the uh, Post uh, newspaper that uh, did an interview with me, um, and I specifically told the reporter. Uh, that the guy that I was living with was my lover, that's okay. my boyfriend. Um, and when it, when it got to, to the press, that was omitted and he was referred to as my roommate. Okay. Uh, the funny thing is that the reporter was, did, wanted to make an issue out of it, but unfortunately the people in the, the, in the company didn't running, want to. Running the and show. he yeah. happens to be an openly gay reporter as well. Which is really Isn't ironic. It, yeah. yeah, so th that is that yeah. somewhat ironic. Yeah. So obviously he, he, he found that as an opportunity for him to, to kind of put it on the front burner. Right. Situation yeah. like that. Now, in, uh, in having come out, though, uh, uh, at the, what, what, where were you stationed? In, uh, where was your precinct uh, initially? Queens or? Brooklyn? Initially it was in the, the 24th precinct, which was the upper west side of Manhattan. Okay. Now, in that vicinity, um, the colleagues with whom you were working, who were heterosexual, to the best of your knowledge, what was their reaction to you being out? Was it? Uh... Um, everybody actually found out the the June of the first year that I was in that precinct because I marched with the organization in the gay pride parade. Yeah. Okay. And Good there was goal. a couple of officers from my precinct who were working the parade yeah. um, that day. So when they came back. Everybody found out, but all, uh, before then, only selected few people no. that I spoke to knew about my sexuality. Once you had vocalized it, what was the general reaction? Was there anything negative, any adverse uh, um, reaction? There was a couple of surprises because uh, a lot of the officers expected uh, stereotypical um, gay men of what they would see on TV or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so when they when they saw me, they didn't realize, and they couldn't believe. Matter of fact, I had fought with some guy, well, not fought, but argued with someone um, for about 10 minutes, and he kept explaining to me that I wasn't gay, that you cannot be gay, you just cannot be Why gay. Why could you not be? Because, because I didn't fit that stereotype. So he was trying to convince me that I wasn't, because right. I didn't fit those stereotypes. That's really but that's, that's a good point. Based upon what Chris was saying, that's a great question to know. Now, that was in 19, what year? This was in 96. Probably. 96. All right, now today, what is the reaction? Isn't it, hasn't it been more of an acceptance now? Um, uh, I'm thinking like, you know, the police organization, even let's say the fireman's right. organization. It has to be something I personally think that it's being more accepted. Yeah, it's slowly, it's slowly so, working its way for the better. That I have to okay. admit. I mean, there were times and there were stories that I've heard of. Uh, cops not responding to to radio calls that right. you know of, of gay officers. ignoring the gay right. officer right um, but now it's just it's just amazing how 
they just don't. It doesn't even phase them. You know, it just does, just as long as the guy's out there and he's gonna do his That's job good. when well, it comes down to. Now, would you down. say the police brass have been pushing it to, to to have this more openness, or is it just that the police officer, the rank and file on their own, are starting to realize? How do you feel about that? I think it really comes was a combination. From, I think it comes down most of it from the cops on the street. Because they're being more exposed to it. Yeah. Uh, right now, the media is 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 changing their 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 characters in 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 certain shows that don't fit the stereotypical well with, like they used to. Mm -hmm. That's you know, so. There's a lot of exposure to uh, it. To it. That's so the where cops are getting it from there. I I would find that somebody like yourself would be a good role model in that sense because the majority of people out there still to this day, 2001 have a preconception of what a homosexual male particularly is or should be or looks like. I think a lot of people still envision the uh, lisping, limp-wristed window dresser mm -hmm. and don't realize that homosexual mm -hmm. males, uh, that actually is the minority of homosexual males. Most gay men uh, are very virile, very uh, uh, masculine. Uh, nothing that you would attribute to any stereotype and uh, it's uh, unfortunately media that emphasizes that end mm -hmm. of gay life and paints an erroneous picture of uh, of what is and more people like yourself in all professions really need to step forward and show that you no know, gay men come in a variety of sizes and shapes and they are all around us whether people want to point. see that mm -hmm. uh, or not um, why would you feel like I know I have my own opinions on it, but why would you feel that a lot of men uh, that don't fit into that stereotype or don't have that closet to hide in, so to speak, why would they be reluctant to come forward? Hmm. Um, I would think it's, it, it really has. I think there's a lot of reasons why. Uh, basically, because of the family, they don't. You know, they might be family issues. Um, they might not inherit again, money they or might uh, work that issues. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, they that, might be I, work I issues as well. Issue. Yeah. Um, because you know, fortunately for me, I, I work for the city, and they have the equal uh, rights um, law in the city where mm -hmm. uh, sexual orientation is included in the discrimination laws. Yes, yes that's so, correct. So correct. that I'm kind of fortunate to know that that sort of keeps me a little safe. Yeah. You know, where I can come out and say who I am, and uh, they won't bother me. But particularly, uh, but there's other jobs that are still like Wall Street. Well, Wall the Street business very, world, banking. You know. you know, if a person is vocal about sexual orientation and jobs such as that, there's only so high, by and large, they're going to go in the company. Mm -hmm. And I guess that could be something that's very frightening, very uh, um, intrusive to a lot of people. Um, but again, if more people don't step forward and say what they are and what's happening with them, that doesn't change. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm an, I, I, I could say I'm an example of that in, in the company I work for, though. I think people have stepped forward enough. I work for, I won't mention the company's name, it's a large organization and they're global. Last May, they just turned around and changed their entire, their benefit packages. Mm -hmm. They now will cover domestic partners. Mm. Now that's that's a complete yeah. turnaround. Yeah. And they didn't have that. They went all the way. So I think if my company is any indication, I think it is changing because I had also heard from some of the higher ups in my company that uh, companies like the names we all know, Coca-Cola, General Motors, Ford is looking at it. So it is changing. I think that acceptability, it's, it's becoming a reality. And I think it's good. Mm -hmm. it, it's good for everyone. Young people now grappling with these issues um, that may not necessarily have a role model in the media or in the movies to identify with. Um, what kind of advice could you give somebody, say a teenager watching who might be going through a lot of ambivalent emotions? Um, what, how would you advise him to make the first step to acknowledging what he is, what, telling somebody close to him or? Uh... Um, actually, what I would do is I would refer him to a uh, gay and lesbian youth uh, group. Mm -hmm. um, the Gay and Lesbian Center in Manhattan 
has a group that meets um, on certain days. I can't remember what days that they actually meet at. But there he can actually find other youths that might be in his situation. And this way he can speak to them they and then an get their discussion. advice and have an open discussion. They can maybe um, give him better advice than I would. Right. Uh, because I didn't come out to my parents uh, until later in my life. I was right. about 20, 21 at the time when I finally came out to them. Well, as you mentioned uh, earlier, it's a family issue, and I agree right. with you. That's, I think that's the first and foremost mm -hmm. of the reasons. Mm -hmm. So, how, how do you feel when you more than likely observe a great deal of colleagues that might not have your courage in stepping forward and admitting what they are, but you know that a great deal, and I'm not just saying in the police, but in any line of work, when there are a lot of homosexual people that are in fact living heterosexual lives. Um, I don't know if that calls them bisexual. I really don't know what the term is, but I think what a lot of people don't realize and what they don't want to accept is that a great chunk of the homosexual population is married with children. That's very frightening and it's a bitter pill to digest, but it, it is out there as I'm sure you've seen. When you see that, not just in the workplace, but amongst people you might know, how does that make you feel? Does that bother you, that you have this courage and this, uh, this will and this mission to come forward and to be who you are? But when you see others that are leading the double and triple lives, what does that do to you? Um, I respect their, you know, their decision on not coming out and not telling anyone. In fact, I, I know a few people um, who actually came to me knowing that I'm openly gay and told me what their situation was um, and I have I have this thing where I feel that uh, when someone comes to confide to me right. that that stays with me mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go out and tell anybody oh, yeah. anything um, but there has been a couple of people within you know the police department the different priests that I worked in um, that has come to me told me that situation um, I've seen them at the clubs uh, with, their, with their with their uh, partners, you know, um, some happen to have been married, some of them were single, some of them had girlfriends, uh, but to each, you know, their own. I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't criticize them, I don't, you know, I respect whatever it is they're doing. Um, I think it's unfortunate because they've committed themselves to someone if they're married and they're doing something. Did you tell them that, Tony? Did you, did um, you say something yeah, like that or involved. just... You don't don't get it, it, it's difficult if you know someone on a personal level and then find out that they're, you know, in a situation like that. But um, if someone makes a certain choice, just so long as they're not hurting themselves or anybody else, I mean, they'll have no objection from me. It's when something is being done duplicitously. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you marry a woman who thinks that you're one way and you're quite, in fact, another. Um, that's something else. I think that's hurtful to the gay community. Mm -hmm. That's hurtful to a straight woman. I think that's something, by and large, the gay community definitely needs to address because I find that a big flaw with the gay community is they enable that kind of behavior when it should not be enabled. And I think all gays have been guilty of this at, at some point or not. Um, that's something that really has to stop because then the cause can't move forward. Basically, if we're enabling that which is going to go against the cause. Yeah, I see your point. Uh, that, that's a very big problem and largely goes ignored. Um, what is your feeling about that? I, like I said, I think it's wrong. I definitely yeah. think it's wrong. If they married someone, they should be honest up front and let them know right. what the situation is. Um, I've had someone who came up to me a couple of years back who was married and was trying to find out how to go about telling his wife about his situation. So what I did was I had an officer, uh, who's now a sergeant, um, come to my house and speak to this guy because he was once married as well. So being that I w I've never been married, yeah. I couldn't really... That was well uh, done. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't really Good relate to, to his it. situation. Of so course. I got someone who was married mm -hmm. who, who pretty much went through the same thing he w is, was going through. Right. And he eventually told his wife and things worked out better than what he expected. Um, as far as they staying together, out. yeah, they spoke it out, things worked out, and, you know, they had two kids, and things worked out with the kids as well. Good. So they're, they're now happy. They became best of friends now. Um, That's good. That's but, a happy ending. Yeah.
But then there's situations where, you know, you got guys who are continually with their wives and still doing things. And I, I think it's wrong because you're not being honest. Of course. Um, and, and, and it's sad because she's being it's misled. Not, not fair to each other. Well, it's one of the reasons why that there's been such an influx of HIV in the, uh, the female straight community. And a lot of these people wonder why they come down with this and don't want to really face to a large degree what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I think it's responsible for all gay people, you know, not to enable situations like that. Um, when you've dealt with men that had been married and do have children and then find that their, their orientation is, is changing, what has been the general reaction of the children or the kids to such a decision? Is it mixed? Is it supportive? Um, actually, the, 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 the guy that I... Uh was talking about earlier that you had counseled right right he said that his kids are fine I mean they were they were older <laughs> at the time so right. it, so they sort of um, there was uh, an they were able to uh, easier to accept right, to accept the whole situation um, so in his case I don't think there was much of a problem um, I haven't spoken to him in a while so I don't know what the follow-up is on, on his but you also mentioned that goal has that youth that weekly meeting of the youth where they speak counsel no, no, the youth group is a separate group okay, but at, separate. The, okay. Yeah, at the okay, center. Okay, it's a separate issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, in these professions, basically, that are notably uh, virile, uh, so to speak, the police and uh, the, the fire department uh, uh, construction, do you find in general there is more visibility of openly gay men? Um, there are more visible openly gay men. Um, Actually, more openly gay females than they are gay men, definitely. Yeah. And I do see, I do see a lot of the people still today, like you mentioned earlier, that still stay in the closet. Yeah. And it's it's just kind of funny what, seeing them in the it bar. It may be know. their choice, right? Yeah. It's it's uh, it, it's largely media, I, I think, to a large extent, uh, also that um, that inhibits to a great deal. While media has given exposure. Uh, to alternative lifestyles at the same token it's reinforcing conventional stereotypes and mm. I, I think people mm. like yourself need to get more attention and more exhibition mm -hmm. in order to show people who are younger and going through this uh, that there is an alternative and there is a way that you could have a fulfilling career uh, be masculine and still be and follow the orientation that you were you were born to live and uh, I think particularly in the suburban areas, uh, this still needs a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, Suffolk yeah, and I Nassau. Would, uh, I, I would have a tendency to agree with Chris. I think uh, the Long Island area, while it's being accepted, it's certainly l much less acceptable mm -hmm. in those areas at this point. But it is changing. Right. Yeah. I like mean, I said, uh, the Goal organization is uh, is restarting their Long Island chapter. Their Long Island chapter, Nassau, Suffolk County chapters. Right, right. right. So that that they they seem to be doing very well. Um, Hopefully, they're, they're they're out there publicizing the organization. They're throwing a lot of different fundraisers, and they're actually right now trying to uh, fight for domestic partnership, which is something they don't really have in the workplace out there. So and they, I, and they're I, slowly trying to work on. And that. I think what what it is is that they're getting support mm. from the non-homosexual organizations, right. if I might say, right. that actually agree mm -hmm. with what they're trying to bring across. So I, I, I think you're right. I think it is, it is changing. But yeah. again, the greatest force in many of our lives is media, television, and film. And if that's painting a picture that somewhat is different from what's really happening out there, that's what sways, unfortunately, public opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, take sports, uh, for uh, example. I mean, in all the different sports that you have and the hundreds of players that participate, there are no gay men. Well, that, I, think I that's find a subject, that I find that's a topic that, for another time. I find that a difficult. We know quote. they're mostly closets. Right. But at this point. I mean, the, but that's the point. You know that more than likely they're there. But again, that's going to go against, uh, 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 you know, the grain of what they well, want. Well, going to against do. the management of the different teams. That's you basically know. what it is. Mm -hmm. But that will change, I think, in time. Yeah. I think slowly, little by little, things little by are little, it will change. change. Absolutely, absolutely. I think if if each one of us makes a change in our lives, I think that has a ripple effect eventually for everybody, and uh, one voice makes a difference. 
Um, for any advice for people experiencing discrimination in any workplace, say somebody who's not very open, a little bit more closeted, what kind of recourse would you find that they would have if, say, remarks are passed or gestures are made or just something that's very uncomfortable? Where can they go? Uh, is there any bias uh, hotline that can be uh, contacted? Um, I believe that the state has an, uh, 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 an office for equal employment uh, rights, discrimination against the workplace. Um, I don't know what the number is offhand, but I know the state does have uh, their own office that deals with situations. That's right, because like under, under New York state law, that's included. It's right. the sexual, no sexual discrimination. Exactly. That's against yeah. the law. Sexual sure. orientation is part of that mm -hmm. uh, discrimination law. Um, the police department and the city have their own office. And then if you're not satisfied with the, with the, with the situation or the, the outcome of what the city does, then you could take it a take step it to a higher and level. go up to the state. A higher level. Right. Or even for uh, uh, people that have gotten uh, uh, harassed as, say, customers uh, in different business establishments for, uh, um, is, is there an end bias hotline? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I know there's an anti-violence project, but that's more working with uh, more violent crimes than, okay. than discrimination. Okay. Um, more like the hate crimes. Uh, uh, right, right. Well, hate crimes Hate crimes be... is more of a, a police department's. Um, it used to be called, a, there was a different name, and then they changed Wouldn't it into the hate crimes unit for the, with the police department. I'm thinking of that incident out in uh, the Midwest, that fellow that was killed out in the, out Matthew the park. Matthew Shepard. Matthew Shepard. Yeah. That really fell under a hate crime, am I correct? Right, yes. right. Tony, right. it did. Okay. Right. That's where, so in a situation like that, that's where the police department would get involved in something I like see. that. I see. Okay, and in the final analysis, we're just about to, to wrap up here. Um, at the say at the end of your career as a police officer, what unique contribution would you like to be known for that you brought to the world of law enforcement and to society in general as uh, Officer Tony Crespo? The, the 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 what I would like to look back on is the day that I was standing uh, in front of the mayor when he put that ribbon around my neck um, and and having the 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 meteor. Um, <laughs> Uh, finally, uh, come to grips with the reality that you know uh, that there's a gay cop out here who can do the same job as anybody That's else. Great, Hopefully, too. you have been the first doll of out of the jar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Christopher Del Gaudio with Talking About. This is Bob Larry. We thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you soon.